just driving along and I found an echidna on the side of the road. It's always, you know, always a worry there what to do. People sometimes pick them up and take them away for miles away and unfortunately that's not good for an echidna. I mean, we don't know why this echidna is here. Well, I do, it's probably to get the ants on the side of the road because they eat ants, but the bigger picture is that it may be a female, she may have babies down a burrow somewhere and picking her up and moving from this location not only would stress her but could kill her babies. Because she has to go back and feed milk to her babies and you move her away from here and she can't find a way back and the babies will die. That's why you shouldn't move echidnas away from a location. Um, what I've done is I've sort of parked the van, stopped, had a look and she sort of sticks her head down, she doesn't want to put her face up, she's just showing all those quills, that's her protection. But I'm not touching her, so I'm not even picking her up off the ground, I'm not touching her in any way, so she's just wandering around doing her own thing. But my presence here has probably encouraged her to go back further off the road, which it's probably a good thing. I'm hoping her burrow is that way. But if it's not, maybe when it's not so busy, she can sneak back to the other side of the road where her burrow might be. As I say, I don't know where, if she has a burrow around here. Don't know. Could just be a boy wandering around. Either way, pretty busy traffic at the moment. Well, for this part of the country, it's busy. And we'll just sort of hope that she'll be okay. The echidna is an unusual animal, it's not a marsupial, it's not a placental monotreme, it lays little eggs and these little eggs um, basically when they hatch, again it's a mammal, it feeds its young milk, but the babies they don't drink from nipples, they drink from just the skin. The skin on the chest uh, oozes out milk and the young sort of lap it up off the fur on her chest. The most, probably the most prehistoric type of animals, or a representation of something that once was prehistoric, and that's egg-laying mammals. And they tend to, well you see them basking in the sun. Uh, I looked after one when I worked in a zoo. We had one for a while, well for many years, and I looked after it, and delightful little animals. Big brains, really large brains, but their beaks are so sensitive that I think a lot of the brain is there to operate the sensitivity through the beak to wander around and pick up insects uh, and especially ants. When I was a kid in the books they used to be called spiny ant eaters and it's a very good description of what an echidna is. It's a very spiny little animal and it eats ants. Little leaf stuck in a, in a quills there. I do tend to get leaves stuck on them. Twigs. Sometimes you get little twigs stuck on them. While I'm here like this, it's uh, she's going to sort of stick her head in the dirt. She doesn't want to come out. Um, I could dig her up, it would be a great stress to her, and probably to me, and what's the point? There's no point in digging her up and disturbing her, I'll just let her be. I don't need to really go around disturbing wildlife too much, it's good fun just observing it, seeing what they do. They're almost like a mammal version of a turtle, but instead of a hard shell they've got spikes. Like a hedgehog or a porcupine, but a different sort of quills. Stuff it's quieting down now, so. I might 
go and leave her to it. She's now wandered off. There she goes. Bye bye. Beautiful little animals.